All right, next up for dimming uh, and uh, the 14, 15 principles of management. We have number six, training on the job, and number 13, encourage education. Now, point number six, training on the job, is important to dimming. You might not think it's that necessary, but when you're in a state of continuous improvement, things are supposed to be changing for the better. The product is supposed to be becoming higher quality, uh, more consistent, and we're trying to get our costs to go down while that quality is going up. So, in, with constancy of purpose, uh, the key elements are the people and continuous improvements along with the customer. So, our continuous improvements could include new processes, uh, new ways of doing things, new materials, new machines, uh, new customer wants and needs that we need to address and figure out a way to deliver. And uh, probably one of the big ones is, uh, as well as the new philosophy, which goes to constancy of purpose and maintaining the culture. So there is no instant pudding, as Deming says. Uh, we want to move towards the new philosophy and move towards the constancy of purpose, including the employee, the customer, and continuous improvement. And this doesn't happen overnight. There's no instant pudding. So we have to get people on board and uh, get them to understand uh, the new philosophy and we need to maintain the culture of quality. And if you don't maintain that, if you don't keep the training going, then the culture will likely slip back into the human's normal way of doing things. Uh, the dimming philosophy goes against, uh, in, in my opinion, goes against what we would normally do in life. It, many, most times. So we have to maintain it. And he's calling for training on the job. This might uh, take an hour a week uh, if we have that, you know, maybe even more. Uh, might need to stay late and if we can and, and work on uh, the concepts. And <clears throat> uh, we might even include quality circles where uh, employees get together to apply the principles of uh, improving quality and lowering cost uh, to better satisfy the customer uh, and give them time to work on projects uh, led by the manager uh, <clears throat> to make these improvements. So it's not just uh, the employees that he's talking about. It's also management. Here again, there is no instant pudding. Uh, the philosophy isn't as easy as it looks. And the key, if management, or say our middle management, our frontline managers aren't on board with the concepts of quality, then nothing's gonna work. In fact, management also has to, to master all of these things and keep the new philosophy going on in their head so they don't revert back to the old ways. We also need to work on leadership. Vimming is calling for more leadership instead of uh, management, and this doesn't come easy for everyone, if anyone. So we have to work on that. Now, uh, it's, it's very important to, to have the CEO uh, involved in this because we've got to have the consistency of the philosophy and the leadership across all the managers so they can go to influence the employees below them and to help maintain the culture. They can't maintain a culture that they don't understand. So then we move on to point number 13, encourage education. Deming is calling for, he's saying that we don't just need good people, we need good people who are learning and improving. Those are the people that are gonna help the company and the organization improve. Now, uh, depending on your age, uh, if you're maybe in your 30s, late 20s, you might have hit a pocket that you've been out of school for so long, uh, maybe not talking to you guys, but workers in general, uh, people in the workforce, you know these people, you do know these people. Uh, they're set in their ways, 
uh, they know every, the best way to do things. They're being ruined by their best efforts. And they're basically deadheading. Uh, they're on autopilot. And it's the same th thing every day. It's like Groundhog's Day, the movie. Uh, so we need these deadheads. I don't mean that really in a negative way. Uh, we need the de deadheads to become thinkers and to become open, open to new ideas and uh, actually help them to become lifelong learners. This could be in a general sense or uh, studying in their field. Uh, they might also become uh, better at root cause analysis instead of just jumping to an assumption, a uh, quick solution, not putting out the, you know, just putting out the fire and then it's going to come back, but to really think about the root cause of why things aren't working out. Now, uh, the manager who just skims across the 14 points might think that, oh, we need to train the people. They don't get the, they don't read the on the job part. Uh, and we need to encourage education. Uh, so we could outsource this, right? Send them to the management institute and let, let them go spend the day with uh, some seminar person, right? Uh, that's not how it's gonna work. Uh, the consultants, the seminars, how would they know? We first, if you're gonna trust them to do this, they need to understand this and prove it. This isn't probably gonna work out because what do they know? It, Deming's not talking about that. He's talking about on the inside, training people in the philosophy, encouraging education. Yes, it can be a study in their field or general interest. Uh, that could be go read a book on something. But we need, we can't trust these people. We can't trust them. It has, really, it needs to come from the CEO. And the CEO or the general manager, they can't learn all this really that quick. It takes time for it to settle in. And then they go to coach uh, the uh, managers and the employees to become better understanding of the philosophy. So outsource, oh, they need training. We're supposed to train people. Let's just send them over there. What good is that gonna do? In fact, whatever they learn is not gonna uh, be accepted probably when they come back. So outsourcing, not a good idea. Consultant seminars, you better know what they're teaching them and uh, how would these people know? In fact, how can you trust anybody? I'm gonna do a video called The Curse of Demi <laughs> because it's gonna be frustrating when you actually get a handle on some of this stuff and then have to go listen to other people. Uh, that's not a good idea. What do they know? We don't know what they know, but we know what we know. And maybe it's just best to keep all of this on the job and in house because we can't trust that other people would know the philosophy. Who better to be the coach and the teacher than the CEO once the CEO understands everything? So there we go. Uh, once we have the plan, do, study, act going on with our constancy of purpose, we're going to have new materials, new processes, machines, and these are all included in the continuous improvement process. So, it sounds easy, easy to read over, but look how important it is. We need people who are learning and improving so the organization can learn and improve. And by the way, we did a video last time uh, on uh, people being replaceable. Those managers that come in and say, everybody's replaceable. Let me tell you folks, once you get this going, and you get this going, and you've turned deadheads into thinkers, and they're learning and improving, they understand all of this, nobody's, a, nobody's easily replaceable. We'd have to start from scratch. The new philosophy for that person would have to start from scratch. So, people replaceable? Not here. Maybe out there, yes, but not in the white room.